You are listening to Fun with Horror with your hosts, Scotty and Andrew. Hello, all you beautiful horror fans out there. Welcome to another episode of Fun with Horror, your weekly movie review podcast in which my best friend Andrew and I give each other movies to watch and then we discuss them the following week. However, Andrew is on a small hiatus right now. So this week I am joined by our friend Stanley of Stanny Boy Reviews on YouTube. And Stanley was kind enough to pick our movie of the week last week, and he picked Dario Argento's Tenebrae. And, uh, of course, if you're enjoying this show, please do us a favor. Go on to Apple Podcasts and give us a nice little rating and a review, and uh, it'll really help us out. But uh, anyway, without further ado, hello, Stanley. Hi. Yes. Oh, my goodness. This is so much fun. <laughs> yes, I'm having so much fun already. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank you uh, for having me. Oh, thank you for coming on the show. This is amazing. No, it's my pleasure. Yeah. As we mentioned last week, you are our first guest, and this is wonderful. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really happy to be the first guest, man. This is really exciting. <laughs> and also, like we mentioned, you have your own beautiful little YouTube channel called... I do. Stanny Boy Reviews. Stanny Boy Reviews. And I we, do. It's on YouTube. Are, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no. that That's it. I was just going to say it's on YouTube. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was going to say that we're big fans of you. No, oh, well, thank you. I'm a big fan <laughs> of you guys as well, obviously. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's on YouTube, and it's, uh, it's a, a video review channel, and um, that's it. I try, to, I try to post things once a week, and um that that's my little plug <laughs> yeah they're about they're about 10 minutes long and uh i love your energy and i love your singing voice and oh god <laughs> <laughs> and, and you do a wonderful job editing your videos so i really appreciate that your that's really nice of you thank you thank you so much but stanley um so we decided that we we have questions for anybody um guesting on the show i guess you could say uh because this is something i love to know and i know andrew does too we love to know this about people first of all i've got i'm gonna have three questions for you here number yeah. one what got you into your love of horror movies oh gosh um i think that it would probably be well, my stepfather, when I was a kid, used to read Stephen King books, and he had a bookshelf in our living room that had just all these Stephen King books. And I would just compulsively just pull them out and look at the covers of them. <laughs> and I had no idea how to read, and I had no idea what they were about, but I would always just look at the covers and then, you know, flip through them and pretend like I knew what I was doing. But um and that eventually would graduate into me watching these movies with him when i was a kid and the first movie i ever r remember seeing i was about three years old actually was pet cemetery stephen oh, king's wow. pet cemetery yeah yeah talk about a talk about a good movie to watch as a child and um <laughs> and that also was with my stepfather and that was what introduced me to the horror genre and it really really made a big impression on me and uh, also put me into um, therapy <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and I really mean that it, um, it, it caused massive insomnia. I couldn't oh, sleep man. from, uh, from the ages of three until about uh, eight and a half, nine years old. Um, and so, um, so you, and wouldn't, I, <laughs> you wouldn't recommend most people watch pet cemetery at three years old. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, <laughs> not at all. And weirdly enough, it's still my favorite horror film of all time. And uh, it took me a long time, though, to to really recover from that trauma. <laughs> I couldn't um, I couldn't like walk past the video in a video store. I couldn't see the cover if it was ever on cable TV. I, I oh, if it man. like if it, if I saw the title, I would like go into like hysterics. Like it really fucked with me. And um, but the sequel, not so much. Like I could like the, the sequel is a whole nother ball game for like obvious reasons. Um, 
but yeah, so Pet Cemetery is what really got me into it and really got me started. And uh, Stephen King books um, well, were were really what started it. I'm giving you a high five long distance right now because my parents <laughs> also had Stephen King books, and I remember them have the cover of Cujo especially. Was, oh wow! Yeah. Oh man, that it haunted me. Um, I watched. I read Pet Cemetery in my teen years, so I I read it a little bit later. But uh, it is also it's not my top, but it's in my top ten horror movies of all time. So I love that it's your favorite. Oh yeah, the, it's just it's just one of the most depressing. Like it's one of the bleakest, saddest. Mo it like in it to me, it's just one of the most frightening depictions of of like of just horror that like I've, I've ever seen. And it, again, it's probably because I saw it at such a young age. I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. And yeah. the book as well. I, I read the book um, probably around the same age that you did, like or in my early teens. And it's it's one of the books that I've read the most in my life. I've probably read it, you know, I, I, I probably like seven or eight times total. Oh, wow. And it's just one of those books that I can pick up and I can read it in a couple of days because I just can't put it down. And I always find something new every single time I read it. And it's it's just one of those. It just is. It's really left a big mark on me. And um, I don't know how well I, I could go on and on. We're not talking about Pet Cemetery. I know that, but like I oh, can go okay. on and on and we on. We can talk about it, it right now um, because <laughs> you actually already answered uh, my second question, which is what is your favorite horror movie? And so that's Pet oh, Cemetery. Yeah. That is that is definitely that's definitely one of the top three. I could tell you that. <laughs> it's funny you'll appreciate this. Uh, I think I've told this story once before on the podcast, but uh, the night that I very first read Pet Cemetery, I had been reading it over a few days, and I was about a third into the book, and I just remember one night. It was around ten o'clock at night. I was getting towards the end of a chapter, and you know, spoilers, slight spoilers here, but nothing big. Um, I was about to put the book down and go to sleep. And all of a sudden, I just happened to glance at the beginning of the next chapter. And the first sentence was something along the lines of the next morning church came back. And oh, I it's was, just so simple. Just like the cat yeah. in the nursery rhyme. And it, yeah, it, yeah, man, it I have grabbed it me. I finished the entire book that night. I was up till four in the morning. And I, I was up in my bunk bed looking down at my door to my bedroom, expecting a dead cat to walk in any moment. And, it's yeah. wild. It's and wild. Ending, Just the, I mean, I'm oh, not going to spoil it, but oh, my. Oh, it's so good. And you're it's talking so about good. bleak. That book is yep. way more bleak than the movie. Oh, yeah. The book, it's 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 got it runs miles on the movie. And the movie <laughs> is the movie is good. The movie, yeah. the movie really does it justice. I think that Stephen King, who also wrote the screenplay, did what he could with the source material, which, it, again, like, kudos to him for choosing to write the actual screenplay because I think that nobody else could have done it. I think if anybody else would have done it, they really, they really could have really fucked it up. And um, and also kudos man, to Mary Lambert who directed oh, absolutely. The, the hell out of that movie directed the hell out of it because they there it could have it could have went a, a number of ways and this the the directions they took with it were um the right directions and uh you know I'm, and i'm also i'm a fan of the remake i really enjoyed the remake oh, to good. um certain degrees um yeah, i i, I kind of i'm so glad because a lot of people didn't i i really liked the way the way they they kind of like twisted the third act and kind of flipped it on its head and um i think they did what remakes should do i think they you know i i, I look kind of look at i look at the remake as more of a sequel and not as a remake i, I think if people go into the remake as a sequel to the first film and then not so much as a remake then they might have a little bit more fun with it and be a little bit more open to it um i'm not sure yeah. i agree with that but i do think that people having an open mind is very important with that movie because sure for me i think what that movie gets right is the tone of the novel and i agree completely with that it, you know the the original as much as i love it it still has a bit of that 80s horror movie feel Whereas yeah. the new one is just, it just has this ominous tone to it. 
Yeah, and it moves quick. It moves quick. The the, the original is like a slow burn. It, it takes about yes. a good hour until we're like getting to where we're going. But the original is like bam, bam, bam. Like from the opening until until the end, you you they they take you on that journey pretty quickly. <laughs> well, we could go really on respect. about this forever, but I know clearly. Third question. Third question. <laughs> And yeah, this is, yeah. This is my favorite. What what scares you in horror movies? Like really scares you? Not just like, oh, you jump in a horror movie and then the movie ends and you're fine, but like sticks with you. Oh gosh. Is there any um, theme or anything? Any type of horror? It's movie funny that you said you? theme because I was just about to say it, it. It's it's probably a particular theme, and I think it's about you know families that are falling apart. I think mm-hmm. it's and which again could go back to Pet Cemetery, but more recently in like movies like The Witch or like Hereditary or um, like movies about families that are are like slowly destructing. Oh wow! Um, and uh, I think that those kind of movies um, that really display that kind of stuff are are movies that that kind of kind of um and like apocalyptic movies kind of really stay with me i watched that movie silent night and i know that's not necessarily a horror film but the one with kira knightley that came out this last year so don't tell me anything because i, I won't. We watched about half of it and yeah. i think it wasn't what we were expecting so we it, didn't not at finish all it, but i've been wanting to see the rest of it i wait till the holiday the holiday is almost here it i is. feel like that's a good i feel like that's a decent <laughs> that's a decent movie to watch around the holidays like it's, I, I think it's a christmas will. movie <laughs> and um but yeah it's um that's like a good theme i think is um movies that are are about families that just um turn on each other and um you know i think those are the kind of movies that i've been tending to uh, turn towards in my adult life right on. and uh yeah. yeah what about you oh um well for me it's my imagination um okay it's it's haunting type movies where things that go bump in the night and you you don't like paranormal activity s- scared the hell out of me um it's okay like, to yeah. me that's the scariest movie i've ever seen it stayed with me for over a week um you know i'd go to bed at night and thank goodness i had a dog at the time because the one thing i just kept in my mind was that if anything was in my house or my apartment my dog would freak out so as long as my dog sure. was calm i was calm you know but, yeah. Totally. Oh, yeah. When I when I saw that movie, the next when I got home, I like ran into my apartment and just ran to my bedroom and turned on the lights as fast as I could. I but can yeah. respect that. Yeah. Movies like that. Um, the first half of Insidious, you know, where there's more a little bit more imagination to it, you know, um, that kind of thing scares me. Blair Witch Project. Uh, when it first I was came just going to say the Blair Witch Project scared the fucking hell out of me. I was probably <laughs> 13, 12 or 13 when the Blair Witch Project came out. And I was, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure how old you are, but I like, I was very young and I was, under, I was part of the crowd that thought that shit was real. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. I really, I was, I was in my twenties. Really, yeah. And I was, I was, I was a little bit younger, but I was under the impression that that movie was real. Like I was part of that internet market where I thought these people were really missing. And I thought that, you know, I, I, I thought I, I could be part of the, part of the search and rescue that could go find these people. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so when I learned that these actors were, you know, were actually actors, like I was a little heartbroken that oh. this was like a ploy <laughs> That's amazing. to, um, yeah. So like, I get that. I get the whole imagination thing for real. So yeah. yeah well, good for you. we, I will tell you about my Blair Witch experience, uh, another time, but, okay. Uh, yeah, I think I for now, it. We've got a movie called Tenebrae to talk about. <laughs> we do. Oh, man. And it's a movie. I've read all your books, Mr. Neal. The book deals with a murder committed with an old-fashioned open razor, right? This girl, too, was killed with a razor. And your book's pages stuffed into her mouth. Can I ask you something? If someone is killed with a Smith & Wesson revolver, do you go and interview the president of Smith & Wesson? Okay, so... Uh... Stanley, hello. We're about to uh, talk about Tenebrae, the movie you chose. Yes. Um, but before we get into it, uh, as always, let me warn everybody out there that Stanley and I are about to spoil the crap out of Tenebrae. We're going to talk about the entire movie. So if you have not seen it, this is your warning to pause the podcast if you want to. At the moment, Tenebrae is streaming on Shudder. 
You can e you can either watch the full movie on Shutter or you can even go to the last drive-in and watch uh, watch them watch Tenebrae, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but without further ado, Stanley, do you think you could give us maybe a little bit like a three-minute recap? I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but I'm going to give it a shot. Honestly, I'm so excited to hear somebody else besides me and Andrew do the three-minute recap. <laughs> and see, that's why I'm nervous, because I'm so used to you guys doing it. And it's so, okay. Like, we I'm get yelled, nervous, but too. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to break it down for you guys. So All right. Let's Go see. ahead. Go for it. Okay, let's do it. So, is, from what I've gathered, <laughs> Tenebrae is about a writer named Peter Neal, who writes horror novels that are super violent and somewhat sexist and he goes to rome so he could talk about his latest book that is called tenebrae uh which is also a latin word that means total darkness i've discovered and he has a stalker who is his ex-girlfriend or fiance rather uh named jane who follows him there and right before he arrives there is a um a cute woman who is shopping at a like a local convenience store who has stolen a copy she has stolen a copy uh of his new book from a, the convenience store and she is slaughtered in her apartment she has her throat cut and has um uh, pages of his book shoved in her mouth um and she is killed and when peter shows up on the scene the cops inform him that the killer has told them that he is going to start murdering people due to the uh due to his books and the nature of his books and then we're introduced to a detective and his partner who are on the case and also to peter's assistant Anne, um who has shown up to aid him while he's in rome and there's a journalist hanging around um who is a lesbian named tilda who is a friend of peter's but hates his new book and interrogates him over it. And uh, she has a girlfriend. And uh, they're also murdered, accompanied by one of the weirdest tracking shots that I've ever seen on film. And uh, Peter gets a letter from the killer telling him <laughs> that he's killed um, Tilda and her lover, whose name is Marion, by the way. And we're introduced to another character named uh, Cristiano Berti, or Berti, who is a TV journalist who seems to be obsessively interested in Peter in his books. And um, the daughter of the owner of the hotel that Peter is staying at is chased by a giant Doberman and somehow oh ends up in the basement. I know it's the, the craziest thing. And she uh, ends up in the basement of the killer where she is also killed. She gets uh, slashed to death by an axe. And later, Gianni, who is another assistant to Peter, um, and Peter himself go to the same house to find out more about the killer. And Peter stays behind and Johnny goes to the window only to see that Bertie is there, the TV journalist, and he is attacked and killed by an axe. And Johnny finds Peter knocked out unconscious, having been hit by a rock. And we find out that Bertie was super obsessed with Peter Neal and his books. And now we are to believe that the killer has been stopped. And there's a plot twist. We Hot find twist. out that Peter's agent, yes, Peter's agent, who is played by John Saxon, who is a very famous character actor that everybody should know. <laughs> um, he is actually in the know that Jane, who is Peter's ex-fiance, has followed him to Rome. And they've actually been having an affair behind his back. And he's killed in the public town square. And Johnny can't seem to shake the murder of Bertie that he witnessed. And he goes back for more information at the house and he's strangled to death in the car. And then Jane, who had stumbled upon Peter's agent after just being killed in public, is murdered in her hotel room shortly after <laughs> by getting her arms cut off. And then it is this big gory mess. And this is where we find out that the killer is actually Peter Neal himself <laughs> in the weirdest reveal um, that I had seen in quite the some second, time. The second murderer. The second, the second murderer, yes. So we had <laughs> Cristiano Berti, who was a, the original murderer, and then we had, um, oh, I think it was Cristiano. Oh God, I'm confused yeah, it was myself. Cristiano. Um, it was Cristiano. Yes, okay, it, it, yes. And then Peter Neal is a, a, the the new murderer. And I forgot to mention that throughout all this, there are flashback dream sequences involving a group of boys taunting a girl into some sort of sexual activity, and the girl was subsequently murdered when she retaliated. And Neil kills everybody else except Anne, who is our sole survivor. And she actually ends up accidentally killing Peter Neil, <laughs> Neil by impaling him um, with some marble um, statue type of thing. By um, Yeah. Um, and that's the end. Very and that good. was four minutes. 
That was fine. <laughs> I timed myself. <laughs> you did wonderful. My dogs though. were fighting the entire time, and I was trying to break them up and tell you this entire thing and try to stop them from killing each other. You so did exactly what Andrew and I <laughs> always do, which is give a lot of detail of the first like two thirds of the movie. And then we're like, Oh crap, we're running out of time. And then we just kind of rush the rest of it. <laughs> I'm like sweating to death. <laughs> this is like but it's cartoon. all good because we're going to talk about kind of the whole movie. Oh, good. Okay. So well, here's, the, here's the big question. It. So you yeah. picked this movie. Uh, I did. Cause Andrew and I decided that when we have a guest on, they're going to pick the movie and they're going to follow the rule. That it's got to be a movie they've never seen. So you had never seen Tenebrae. Never. But you are a Dario Argento fan. I am. I have seen... I, I'd like to tell myself I'm a Dario Argento fan. <laughs> I've seen select Dario Argento filmography. And, uh, you know, I've seen some of the older stuff. Not like the older, older stuff. But I've seen like some of the older stuff. And I've seen a little bit of the newer stuff. Okay. And I'm under the impression that this was like his last good movie. But I've seen a few of the movies that were made after this, and we'll, we can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, no, I didn't hear that it was his last good one, but I did hear that this movie is pretty much the peak of Giallo's. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So are you fair a enough. fan of Giallo's in general? Well. Not really. Oh, and, interesting. Uh, yeah. And, and, I, and I don't know. I'm wondering, had I known that this was the kind of movie that this was, like, this was, like, the, the genre, then I, I wonder if I would have picked a different film. That doesn't mean I didn't have fun with it. That doesn't mean it wasn't, like, great by any means. But, um, you know, like, I, I have thoughts. I definitely have thoughts. So, yeah, thoughts. well, in general, what did you think of Tenebrae? I liked it. I liked it. I watched it more than once, like, you know, to prepare for us to talk about this. And I liked mm -hmm. it more on the second time than I did the first time. Same. But, um, is it right? Yeah, I think, I think I, I think knowing the story the, the second time kind of, um, kind of, um, amped my interest for it. And Absolutely. I, and I don't know what that means entirely, but I had a lot more fun the second time. Well, for me, um, the first time I saw it, I, I'll admit I was kind of bored in certain parts yes. of it. Yes, um, it dragged. It was a little bit aged, um, dated in a way. But uh, the second time, knowing the secrets of the movie, I think that really helps because you're watching the movie in a different way. Um, yeah, you know agreed. who the killers are, and you're watching – you're looking for a change to come over Peter uh, when he becomes the killer, which yeah, I'm not really sure I saw even the second time. And, you know, I was kind of looking for that, too, because there's there's the, um, the moment, you know, when you, you know, the second time when P that Peter is the killer, obviously. Yeah. And well, I was searching for that. But he's not the that. killer at the beginning. And that's the interesting part. Exactly. Yeah. But you you know, when. You know, you know when Cristiano is the killer, and you know that he dies, and you know that yeah. at that point that Peter is the killer for the, for that the, the, the remainder of the film. Yeah, and uh, I why? didn't know that the, exactly. It, like I had questions, and like even like with the dream sequences aside, and like kind of them trying to explain all of that stuff and like make that make sense. I still, I still didn't have like a lot of answers, and. Uh, yeah, like I was still was a little confused regardless of, of both viewings. I still had to like do a little bit of research and kind of like dig a little bit. And I don't know yeah. if that was like an ambiguous choice of Dario Argento's and like if he wanted to be vague or I, don't, I, I didn't really know what he was trying to do. And there's been yeah. other films that I've seen in his catalog that that were just a little bit more um, obvious and just made made more of a better viewing and again i guess they were just uh, of a different a different genre what were those and, uh, what were those um you know and like like opera for instance okay i really really loved opera and um and i i th i don't think suspiria is considered a, a you know a, a g g how do you say it is it giallo giallo or giallo? giallo like i don't even know how to say it um, I don't think Suspiria is considered a giallo, is it? Like, um, it's not. Some people call it a giallo because it's got. I don't some think of, it is. Well, story wise <laughs> and plot wise, I don't think it is either. But visually, it does. I guess it does have some of the 
uh, I don't know. I, they talk about yeah. it. <laughs> they talk about it in In Search of Darkness, and they even mention there that that some people call it a giallo, but it's really not. I I wouldn't consider it so. Like I don't know, but I I really love Suspiria. I think Suspiria is it's probably in my top 10, probably top 20 favorite horror films and it's for for a number of reasons. Like it you know, and I it, I don't I don't know. Like I but I really love <laughs> Suspiria. I love I love opera and I um I really like parts of Inferno and I really like parts of Creepers, which is okay. also called Phenomena with uh, Jennifer Jennifer Connelly. Oh, that's Phenomena. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, ha- it has its moments. It's like a fucking weird ass story that doesn't really like correlate <laughs> to like anything. Like as like plot wise, it, it's a big mess. But visually, like it's stunning, and it has like all these really cool set pieces, and so. Yeah, I'm not really. I, I I'm not really sure what was going on. A good portion of of this entire movie though i don't i have a lot of unanswered questions (laughs) i think i think for me the only question that i i mean i guess i guess the the answer is there in a way um peter has his history where i mean let's talk about the flashbacks um yeah there's there's a beautiful girl who turns out that uh dario argento cast a trans actress in that part that's so i so i read and I had no idea, and uh, I couldn't have told you either. <laughs> that was amazing, um, and yay for Dario Argento for being ahead of the curve, you know. Yeah. Uh, but she, so she's this this girl in somebody's dream. We don't know it's Peter right away, and she's on a beach, in a very sensual scene with men where. Yeah, I mean, she's kneeling on the ground, and they're all surrounding her, and we've all seen that movie. Um, yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> I've even seen that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then it seems like she, uh, he, he disres- he's he loses respect for her because of what she's doing with the other boys. And then God, well, what happens? She, he, she, like, he, they, they like a, t- t- he hits her or isn't that what happens yeah, like that's he, right. he ends up hitting her yeah but and then, then like she ends up attacking him like they end yeah. up like attacking him for some reason and then she ends up like putting her her heel in his mouth yeah and yeah. Uh, like it's it's very surreal like the whole thing is very surreal and i don't know like if any of it actually happened like i like i'm sure a lot of it like actually happened but then she ends up getting killed right yeah, Don't well, they... so he, I, I feel like he's getting his revenge on her for humiliating him, and right, he's watching her through these leaves, and then he comes out and stabs her in the stomach. So, and we find out later that that's Peter. So Peter is, in essence, a murderer, which is probably where he gets his ideas for his books. For his books, yeah, hence, hence Tenebrae. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and. So he's written this book, Tenebrae, um, and yeah, skipping ahead, I mean, we can talk about things in between, but as you said, Cristiano um, is this guy, and watching it a second time, you see Cristiano in the same room with Peter, and you see the way he's looking at Peter, and it all makes sense. Um, yeah, I noticed that too this time around. Like, I specifically was like, and like narrowing in on him during that interview scene with the lesbian reporter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then Cristiano, so yeah, Peter and Johnny, uh, they go to Cristiano's house, and Johnny sees Cristiano get murdered, and it's Peter. So Peter has learned that Cristiano is killing people, but he turns it around on him kills Cristiano and then starts killing other people and like that's crazy I kind of love that twist but I still don't I mean I guess I guess Peter's just insane yeah yeah like and there was like a (laughs) a weird trigger that that went off in that in that moment at the house to where so am I to understand that Peter is the one that killed Cristiano yes Yes, and, and then, then he, and then went back and then hit himself over the head with a rock to make it look like he, like, was attacked. 
Yes, exactly. Okay. So like that, like that doesn't add up for me. Okay, <laughs> like, so that... that whole little section doesn't add up for me. Because Peter's Peter decides he's going to become the killer. So he kills right. Cristiano and then makes it look like somebody hit him over the head so that everybody thinks that maybe Cristiano wasn't the killer and there's another person out there killing. So Right. And the kills hmm. change. It, uh, Cristiano seems to kill people because they're sinners. Uh, yeah, because there's like – yeah, they're deviants. Like he killed, he got the yeah. reporter because she was a lesbian. He killed her girlfriend because she was a lesbian as well, and because they were having like extramarital affairs, like with the the, the club boys and all right. of that stuff. Yeah. And the first, the first girl to die, I have her name right here. Uh, I think I have her name. Uh, Elsa. Oh, I, Elsa. I, I, yeah, the shoplifter. Yeah. So not only does she steal a book, but then when she's confronted by the shop owner. She offers to have sex with him so that he'll drop charges. Yeah, like she like, goes there. That's how much that book Tenebrae was worth to her. I literally wrote what the <laughs> fuck in my notes. And then I wrote LOL next to it. Like I was like taking notes with a pen, like with a pen and paper. And I wrote what the fuck, LOL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then she um, wrote, and then I, and she said, "You're not gay, are you?" Like, and I love the fact right. that her voice was like all these dubbed voices. Like, I couldn't get over like all the voices that were dubbed over, and how outrageous they all sounded. But uh, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, that's that's uh, these Giallo movies. I, I think Suspiria yeah. was similar, right? Oh, very much so. They're they're all very much like that. Absolutely. And I think people love that about these movies. I, I'm not a huge fan of it. I, I wish that they just kept the regular boy. I would rather watch subtitles, to be honest. Like, I would rather watch the, how they're actually shot and then listen to the actual voices and read. Like, I would rather read the subtitles. Yeah, I don't know if the movie ever even came out like that, though. I don't know. I I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I didn't even look to. I didn't even look to see. <laughs> um. But, but okay. Real quick, before Elsa dies, uh, how about Neil riding his bike to the airport? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah, that was that was kind of a choice. I love the. I it took me a moment to realize they were in New York, New York in 1980. Yeah, well, like, I was, that was kind of a. I was almost ahead. happy about that. Yeah, because it started out in New York. Not that I have anything against Italy, but I was like, oh, this isn't going to be like a foreign movie that sounds dubbed. Everybody looks like they're actually saying their lines, and then. Uh, you know, right after the intro, they go straight to Rome. Yeah, exactly. But also, was it normal for people just to put their bags down among strangers and then walk away in the airport? It's so funny you said we must have taken the exact same notes because <laughs> I really wrote I wrote down like why would someone put their bag down? He just drops his bag, yeah. and then of course, like that, you know, it, it sets up for something. But then that's my another another question, and I didn't like, even pause to like see what what they pulled out of the bag later. What was it that they pulled out of the bag? And they were like so shocked to find. What What did they remove from his bag later when they got to the hotel? I don't know that... Well, they removed some of his stuff, but they put the broken watch... It was and, a watch. That's yeah, what it was. and dirty, bloody clothes. I wrote and that clothes. down. clothes. Yeah, okay, I just thought it was clothes. just like... I didn't even notice it was blood. I just thought it was like dirty. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it was bloody clothes. And Okay. I will be honest. I kind of forgot uh, why they put those in there, but I I couldn't even tell you. I feel like I it was a plot hole. Maybe to scare him or something. I don't know. It, maybe so. Yeah. And mm, because yeah, it was I don't know. it was Jane that did it. Jane had it somebody was else Jane. Do it. She had that girl. There was a because Jane calls him from the from the phone booth right which is another thing i thought was kind of funny and this must be something that only happened in like the late 70s early 80s or whatever <laughs> but you can get paged at an airport oh yeah by yeah. name and have like there's a message for you mr peter neal please come to the front desk at you know like so and so <laughs> like the booth like i thought that was kind of funny i don't think i ever experienced that but i've seen plenty of movies where people are being paged at airports uh, oh my I mean, gosh! I don't think I've seen any movies. <laughs> you've, have you seen Airplane One and Two? The no, the I haven't. Oh, you need no, to watch but I those. know that Helen Reddy is in one of them, and I yes. love Helen Reddy. You need to watch it. At least the first <laughs> one. I have the to first check one's it out. fantastic. Anyway, 
<laughs> I'll have to look at it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, he they go to Rome, and then then we have Elsa, and okay, so what did you think of the kills in this movie? So you know, I expected them to be a lot more graphic, especially for a Dario Argento film, because like he's really notorious for like his kills to be really really graphic and like over the top. And especially for movies like Suspiria, which I won't spoil any, anything, but they're very, they're very red. Um, but I will say that the blood in this movie is so over the top red. It's like yeah. so bright and it's so, and maybe that's like on purpose, like to go, you know, to go against like the pastels, like the pastel colors and like the bright, like the bright, like backdrops and the white backdrops. Um, but I, I appreciated it. I appreciated the, um, the kills because they're so, they're so they're so odd, you know, like they're so odd, like ripping out the pages of the book and shoving them in her mouth and then slashing yeah. her throat. And then, um, you know, not to jump ahead, but I'm going to jump ahead. Oh, but when they're killing, when they're killing Tilda, the reporter, when she's putting mm. her shirt over her head and they make the slash in the, in the shirt yes. and it, it creates that hole and you see her face in the hole. And I'm sure that's one of like the most popular shots of the film. Um, but I think that's just one of the most beautiful shots of the movie. And um, there's a, like I think the kills are probably the highlight of the movie for me because I think they're so. just done so well. Like they're they're just shot so beautifully. And I didn't I didn't bother to write down the name of the cinematographer, but I think that the same cinematographer has worked with Argento before because I it's it's just very familiar the way that he the the way that these these kills are filmed and it it's just really it's really gorgeous. Yeah, I think I think it's something that Argento is known for. Um, sure, I've only seen two movies of his. Uh, and remind me, and what were one. they? Suspiria. You, oh, you one. have seen Suspiria. Okay, good. I remember yeah. you mentioning that you have seen something, but yeah, okay. Uh, and I mentioned I had seen the remake before the original. That's the conversation we had. Yes. And okay. honestly, uh, the one thing I didn't mention. Uh, because I don't want to go on my little tirade that I usually go on, but I, the only way I was able to see Suspiria, was on, um, oh geez, what's the free app called that everybody? Tubi. Tubi, Tubi. Yeah. and I had to deal with those commercials, commercials. that they just put yeah. in randomly, with no rhyme or reason for where they yep. put them. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, so my question is, did you watch it edited? Was it like an edited version? I don't know. It's the only Because version there's a I was director's cut and the director's cut is top notch. It okay. is so so pretty. So if if you can find out if you watched the edited version or the unedited version, there's a there's a big difference. If I can yeah, if I can get my hands on it, I do want to see it again and I want to see the remake again because I actually love the remake. I have to watch the remake again because I really love the director. And uh, the only time yeah. I ever saw the remake was in theaters. And I just remember being so fucking bored. Oh, and, no. And <laughs> uh, I, I know. And I, but then and it gets maybe to it the end. State of mind. And yeah, the ending kind of goes bonkers. Nuts. <laughs> bonkers. And it's like, but it, again, that's a, a going back to like how remakes are done. So, so it, if they're done differently, they might be done right. That was a remake that is not the same film. No, that is a remake that is a completely different movie. And so like if that's another movie you just have to go into with an open mind. And I think I was probably so stoned that I just I don't remember much of it. OK, <laughs> so like I, I'm sober now. So I think that I, I could probably have a little bit more of a respect for it if I go into it with an open mind. <laughs> I'd be interested to hear what you think. Um, yeah, I'll have I, to give it a shot. I liked it. I needed to see it again. Uh, I did. I like you. I actually did kind of think it was slow at points. So you're not yeah. alone there. But I remember just, that scene where she gets like twisted and like yeah. broken into pieces. And I remember that being really fun and really fucking disturbing. Uh, but that's all I remember, honestly. And let's try not to spoil the rest else. of the movie, though. I'm not spoiling nothing. Thank you. You're right. <laughs> Zip. But I, I will say the last act of that movie is just insane. So Insane. Yes, I remember that. Uh, but it, I mean, it does have the same kind of story. Not to get too much into Suspiria, but I mean, it is about witches, you know? So yeah, yeah, I do. And I, it's great cast. The cast yeah. is really good. I yeah. love the cast being good. And there's people in that, mm. in the cast of the remake that I didn't know who they were at the time. And now I do. So I definitely yeah. watch that movie. So, but yeah, back touche. to Tenebrae. I know. <laughs> uh, uh, Jane's kill though. We're talking about the kills. 
Yes. And I do think the kills kind of ramp up as the movie goes on. I think they get more oh, bloody. Yeah. They do. Although it is, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's dated 1981, 1980 mm-hmm. gore. Where, yeah. you know, you don't you really can, see open tell. wounds, but you see blood. Yeah, it's like chopping a limb off, you know? Like yeah. you can, you, they do what they can with um. And it's funny because the the kills get a little bit more graphic as the movie goes on, and it's when the it's when the killer swap happens too. It's like when Peter is the killer, the mm. the the kills become quite more graphic. Like, yeah. and then yeah. that's when like the the real insanity is like at play. And I and I kind of found that interesting on the second watch too, like the when Same. Jane is killed, the 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 intensity and the aggression of when he kills her is really, really out the roof. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, this is like, this is well, like think... you're killing someone who's betrayed you type of shit. Yeah, yeah. Which, okay, so that's the other point going into the story a little bit. We've mentioned that Jane followed Peter, but did he? Did she really follow Peter or did she just come to Rome to see John Saxon? Um, Bulmer. And see, Bulmer. I didn't even know if that was even something that was necessary because I thought that the whole time, I think that she was actually there for Peter. I think that I think that she was in it. The way that I saw it is that she was there for Bulmer as like just like an, a ways to like get there. Like I think that, yeah. Like I thought that she was there ultimately for Peter. And I think that especially on the second watch, watching her and Bulmer kiss after he like lets her out of the closet. Like <laughs> that was like the like the the most not unrealistic like l- least passionate kiss I've ever seen and I feel like Okay, but was that I feel like was that was that like just a 1980s kiss though like a movie kiss it could have been because that's how been. I saw that and I was just like okay well that's that's just they kiss better I, I than that know, nowadays. I don't know because why would she have been there at the very beginning, like trying to like trying to like fuck with them at the beginning? And I then why would she have been? Oh, maybe so. I maybe, think it was Argento so. misdirecting the audience. I think he had her go to Rome. She's actually there to see Bulmer, but because of her history with Peter, um, and she obviously probably met Bulmer through Peter, uh, but sure. because of her history the audience is going to automatically think that, oh, maybe Jane is killing all these people, you know? Okay. Yeah, that that actually does make sense. But what yeah. about when she's, like, driving around, like, in front of his hotel? Is that also misdirection? Yeah, just going to see Bulmer. Oh, because he's at the hotel, too. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. well, shit. All right. Well, I guess we needed to break that down <laughs> for me. <laughs> all good. Thank you. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh. Okay, Perfect. so I have this <laughs> written down. I don't even remember. Uh, ran- oh, the random guy driving off the road. The random guy driving off the road? Yeah, I think it was the part where uh, the detectives come to Peter's hotel room. And yeah. the killer calls. And they look down and they see that the killer might Is be in the, in the phone, phone booth. booth. Right. Um and then they go downstairs and like some guy just like drives off the road randomly. And I was like, what Oh the, yeah. When why? they're, when the, when the female detective and the male did their like, yes. Oh yeah. I don't, I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> like, but, I couldn't tell you again. Misdirection. I thought the voice that was calling Peter on the phone was a female voice. I see. I thought it was a female voice too. Like the whole time, and that's what, what, because at one point I thought the killer was Jane. Yeah. And I, so at, 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 for a brief amount of time, I thought the killer was Jane. And then at one point, I thought the killer was also Anne. I thought the mm-hmm. killer, but then that, that wouldn't have made any sense because Anne is with him literally the entire time. And then I thought there was two killers. And then, so I, I don't know. I, I don't I know. Thought... I was. I thought Jane was a misdirection. I thought because it was too obvious and I thought, oh, there's no way she's actually the killer. But I didn't think it was a guy. I thought actually the fact that they kept calling the killer a he was also misdirection, that it was going to be a female. Yeah, they just automatically assume that it's going to be a guy. And I think that that's probably because of the 
the way that these people are being murdered, they probably just assume that it's going to be a male doing it. Right, right. Um, I don't know. That's just how these movies usually work. <laughs> so we we touched on the the death of the lesbian couple, but yeah, you talked which, about the shirt, but yeah, everybody talks. Are we going to talk that. about that tracking shot? Yes. Okay. Because because we need to talk about that tracking shot because it's <laughs> fucking ridiculous. <laughs> It's just ridiculous. Like, I, I couldn't, I cannot get, pa- like, I, first off, I read, or I heard, rather, that it took three days to do that tracking shot. Wow. Which is, I don't know if anybody, you know, just for a little clarification, there is a shot that is, it, it starts with going out of the window of the lesbian couple's house. It goes up the roof. It goes, like, up like the, or over to the side of like the house and like up the the, the the roof more and then it shows like a window that goes shows the staircase and then like goes back down and then goes like over and then like it's literally just showing the roof of their yeah. house and like the side of the house and then you have no idea why you're seeing this and it's no two idea. and a half minutes like a two and a half minute tracking shot of this all for it to show like to end up on like the other side of the house and then you see that, which, and I didn't even see it until the second time I watched it. You see someone breaking the um the the, the side window. You see someone like snapping like the the blind so they can get in. Yeah, which, and I didn't even notice that until the second time. Which gets rid of the idea that the camera is supposed to be the killer. Exactly. Through the so windows, like, which yeah, and yeah. I didn't even think that it was supposed to be the camera's POV, like or the killer's POV. I didn't even think that the first, the first or the second time. I was just like, "What are we doing?" Like, honestly, this is I the love most it. I kind of love it. I'm so glad you do because I didn't. <laughs> because I had it was just no so idea. weird. I did love the music though. The music that was accompanying exactly. it. I thought the music was wild and fun, and I thought that that without the music, I don't know if. If, but you know, I, I could have fast forwarded it the second time, but I found myself actually sitting through it again the second time, just going like, why is this here? Like I was analyzing it, wondering what, what the whole <laughs> point of it was. And then I'm glad that I sat through it because I, I didn't notice the, the person cutting the blinds until the second time. So real quick, the music was done not by Goblin, who... Which is who I thought originally. But, well... It was kind of done by Goblin. It was three members of Goblin. Claudio Simonetti, uh, Fabio Pignatelli, and Massimo Morante. And they oh, you all have used... such a beautiful accent. Oh, thank you. Uh, they all <laughs> used to be in Goblin, but they could not call themselves Goblin for this movie because they weren't, like, there were members missing, I guess. But Okay. Because I thought, when I started watching it, I was like, oh, this sounds like Goblin. Um, and... Then it didn't say Goblin, and I had to look it up, and, oh, Claudio Simonetti. Yeah, okay, got it. Okay. But, yeah, I love the music, and I think the music is I what helps too. me enjoy that weird, stupid tracking shot. What? Yeah, it was just, I mean, you know, I'm sure I'll watch this movie again eventually one day in my life, and maybe the third time I'll get behind it. Because, like, again, Dario Argento is weird. Like, he, he has a bunch of really weird off-the-wall like just insane shots in all of his yeah. movies that don't really like correlate to anything that's actually going on in in the the real time of the film. Right. And uh, I this think is he just does another things classic for example sake. of that. Exactly. So this is this is another another one of those things. Like the kills, so, like Jane's kill especially, you know, he chops off her her hand and then she goes against this white wall and sprays oh, it with her blood in a beautiful scene. But it's so pretty, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. And I but there's no point to it except for it to look artistic. And I think Dario just gets into the artisticness of everything. And sometimes it sure. doesn't work like the tracking shot. Yeah, but that that kill though, Jane's kill is so fucking good. Also, I wonder if Dario was a fan of Marion's left boob. Or if she was, because it was only her left boob hanging out all the time. Yeah, and can we talk about, <laughs> was she drying herself off with that large bed sheet? Or yes, was she just, like, she trying was. to wrap herself up with it? Okay. I don't know. What I an interesting story. she was drying story. herself off, and then, yeah, she was, Because like, she was soaked, right? She had just got out of the yeah. shower after having sex with that kid, and then... 
she was drying herself off for quite a while. And again, I think it's and, it's a visual thing for Dario yeah. Argento. Yeah. And her what kill a, I was wonder what beautiful. it was like. Oh, again, yeah, absolutely. And there was a um, I, I, never mind. I, that'll be a spoiler. Never mind. Yes, Wait, the very spoiler good. for what? A, a different, a different movie? film. That's okay, a different yeah, movie. Yeah. And I don't want I don't want to go there. Yeah, but like we won't he, say. it yeah, it's just um I I like I like that kill. <clears throat> that kill is good. And um it's it's just it's just interesting the way I, I wonder what it would be like working with him and like just like listening to his ideas and uh, you know how he how he like set something up and he's like okay so I'm going to have you die like this and you're going to walk around in the bed sheet and then you're going to you know killer is going to cut your throat and then uh, you're you're going to your your neck will crash through the window and the blood. Yeah, and then they're like, yeah. okay, like, you know, and then they somehow film it and it looks like that. And then that's, you know, like, you know, I, I just, I'm really interested to know what it would be like to work with someone like him. Well, we need to, I mean, obviously we need to get our hands on some Blu-rays with some really good behind the scenes features. On yeah. Uh, yeah. Evidently, I found out today that there's a very nice 4K Blu-ray out there of Tenebrae, and I kind of want it. Oh, I bet it's pretty. You know what would be really good on Blu-ray is Inferno. I don't. You, I don't know if you've seen Inferno, but seen watch yet. Inferno. God, get get, get <laughs> it, get it, get a chance. It's a really, really like it's a it's a it's a movie. I will. I will watch that. Ooh. Um, what about? Let's go to the dog chase scene. Oh man, I actually really liked this scene. I like I because too. again, it didn't. It didn't it didn't like fit into the film but somehow it just was like whoa this girl is getting chased by a doberman for five yeah. straight minutes and now we're at the layer of the killer and it was and actually kind of scary like the doberman was, actually yeah. catches her at one point yeah and then and now she's like covered in blood and she is at this big giant house and you know <laughs> that kind of like set it up for for I, 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 I was a little – that's when things started to, like, get a little bit scary for me. Have you ever been attacked it, by a dog? I have. And weirdly enough, it was a St. Bernard, and I was oh. about four years old, and the St. Bernard's name was Smiley. Aw. Aw. Weirdly enough. Smiley. Yeah, and it wasn't the dog's fault. I, I antagonized the shit out of that dog. I deserved oh. it. And he took a big chunk out of my leg. Oh, no. And, um, yeah, and, you know, it, again, well, You really got fault. attacked. I just got jumped. I, like, I just yeah, had a dog, like, like, run at me and jump me. And then, like, I think my friend chased the dog off. But, like, when that Doberman was chasing uh, Maria, that's what came into my mind. So did, did it? Did it bring back that dog attacking you to you? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. Okay. And, like, usually and, – and I'm the biggest dog person in the world. I love dogs. Oh, like, me too. Like, to me this too. day. So, like, I'm not traumatized by any means. I was so young. Like, if any – like, I, I I have to be told this story. You know what I mean? So, like, I I, I probably have blocked it out. Yeah. And – um, but it's just it, – it's ironic. I – um, it, it was a really effective scene, though. Like, anything with – with animals like whether they're like mean animals or not like those are scenes that really like stick with me yeah and uh, i i didn't think that like every time that the dog was like there was a, a fence like between the two of them or there was something <laughs> like within like a certain height that was like oh she's safe but then this fucking dog just jumped over it oh and i gotta it, say i love that shot like there's something i love about the shot where the dog runs up to the fence and then it, he's he looks at the fence and it's a little too tall, so it, it steps back, and then it like it's just stepping back to get a running jump. And I don't know why, but I love that shot. I just oh, love yeah, that the great. dog just like thinks about it, and he's like, "Well, I need to get a longer run, and then I so can make wild. it over the fence." So wild! They really gave that dog like a character arc. <laughs> but so the movie, this is kind of where the movie starts to change because first of all, she gets rid of the killer's. She slams his hand in the sliding glass door, and he drops his razor blade. But then all of a sudden, now we're dealing with an axe, and he yep. axes her in the stomach. Oof. Yeah, that's when like gets um. That's when things like get kind of switched up, and it's so funny yeah. because the next morning, I want to know who was mowing that lawn. By the way, because <laughs> right? like, how are you? How are you mowing the lawn in broad daylight, and it's like you don't see a body. Just like in the middle of the, <laughs> yeah. in the middle of the lawn, and that was a little bit of a cheat. The, 
Yeah, I kind I mean, I liked it. It still, it still worked a little bit, but oh, uh, and I really liked that girl. Like, I thought that she was like a really relatable character. Oh, like, out too. of any of the characters, I thought she was like, I thought she was sweet and cute. Although, and... although it it almost went into uh, creepy territory with her and Peter. It it a little bit did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, you know, there was a, a few instances where I thought that. Peter was a little questionable, not like as a killer, but just like as a character. Like there were some things that he did that just were that just were a little questionable. Oh, I'll be honest. I didn't and, like um, Peter from the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And I wonder if that was just him as an actor or if just if it was just his character, because I had heard that he also was not like a great guy. Yeah. You know, like I mean, I heard I heard, he wasn't a great guy. I heard he was the only like really accomplished actor on the set, except for maybe John. Yeah. Samson. Golden Globe winner, man. But so. yeah, so I, I love John Saxon. Oh, me oh, too. Oh man, what me a too. prince! What a prince! He can do no wrong. Um, now, so we already talked about the part where they find Cristiano, they kill Cristiano, axe to the head, and then oh, uh, what a good scene! That scene Peter. was great. And then Peter and Anne uh, make out on the couch. Oh, so before that though, okay, this is what I was going to talk about. It's interesting. I didn't realize this, but before they go to Cristiano's house, um, there's the shot of the pointy sculpture in the hotel room where the camera just zooms in on it. And yeah. it's just like a random shot. But I guess that is supposed to signify the shift in the story of the movie. Okay. Where Neil, like, that's where Cristiano stops being the killer and Neil becomes the killer. And it's just like this little, okay. yeah, this little visual cue that this is the movie's different now. So I didn't catch that, but I'm gonna now that I know that I can I can see that now. Yeah, I I think I read it. Like, I can Wikipedia see it in my page. head. Yeah, I can see that in my head now, though, and that makes that makes sense. Now That's here's another weird thing. Did you read that this movie was actually supposed to take place in the future? Like I did, yeah. the, yes. That there was like some sort of like apocalyptic event that had happened, yeah. and it was supposed to be five years in the future, and it was supposed to be like desolate, like mankind, like had like um, ceased to like exist to a certain point or uh, something of the sort, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, Which and but there's... you never would have been able to know. Yeah, the only the only hint is uh, John Saxon's little video phone. Where he calls Which his, I have no idea what you're talking about. He calls his, oh, it's just simple. He calls secretary. his secretary. Yeah. I didn't even consider that. I just thought that that was something he was just talking to his secretary over. That seems completely normal of, to me. Which and of means course, I'm just secretary, secretary, because it was the 80s, but his assistant. Yeah. How funny. I even wrote a assistant. I didn't even put my, two and two together. <laughs> That's hilarious. And then we go and say secretary like sexist oh yeah um, that's really funny so yeah uh we've kind of talked a lot about this we we talked about jane hiding in the closet uh when yeah. peter does his little fake out that he's gonna go back um i thought it was i thought uh bulmer's death was very bold that was a very interesting choice to kill him in public Oh yeah, no, I thought that was too because I didn't, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect for, and then that's when another moment where I thought that it was going to be Jane. Yes, because I saw like the red heels approaching, mm -hmm. and I thought that, you know, I thought that was like, and then he dies, and then all of a sudden she turns around and she's horrified, and I was like, wait a second, like what the hell is actually happening? Because I, I, I was a little thrown off at that point, and I'm going to um also correct myself because i just read in my notes that this movie does have the same cinematographer as suspiria okay. i had actually written that down which is luciano de Durali or Diwali. i can't read my own handwriting but it, it does have the same cinematographer as suspiria so okay awesome. just a side note um but yeah that was a that was surprising to me because um it was in broad daylight yeah yeah it was completely in broad daylight and in public that he gets killed but I think the main and, purpose was again the misdirection that you just talked about. Yeah. Because yeah. Jane they made it look and how messed up is it that Peter sent Jane the same either the same red shoes or the same type of red shoes that the girl wore that he killed when he was oh, uh, yes. younger. 
That's messed up. Oh yeah, very messed up. <laughs> And Something's wrong, man. <laughs> it was also sad when Gianni uh, was killed. Uh, yeah, I like, you I know, like I actually really, I felt for this kid. And especially when, when Cristiano does get axed in the head, there's a shot of uh, uh, Gianni's face when when that happens. Like, his reaction is so genuine. Like, there's a, I wrote it down, like, he... He looks genuinely horrified. Yeah, yeah. And I think that his reaction is the most the most genuine reaction of seeing someone get killed, um, probably in the whole film. And I was like, oh man. And I think that like his performance throughout the rest of the film is actually really spot on. And I really, I really felt for this kid. I did too. So I liked... when he gets strangled in the car, and when he turns and sees the killer, mm -hmm. like I, he knows, he knows that it's it's. I think he knows it's Peter. Yeah, he sees Peter. We don't, yeah. but he sees him, so it's... Oh, it's so that sad. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. But then there's another bit of misdirection. I forget exactly what she said, but Jane calls Annie, or Anne, and I forget what she says, but she says something like, I have to, I have to tell the truth or something like that. Do you remember? She says um... something, and it's a very obvious, like, knowing how the movie ends, it's very obvious misdirection. Because Argento at this point is like, we've been so. hinting at Jane this entire movie, and now you're really going to think that Jane's about to go confess to everything. I do not remember. I don't I remember do, Yeah, all. I don't remember. I wrote down Jane's call to Anne is a bit of misdirection. But that's oh, when, shit. Yeah, I don't remember that's when all. she's at home and then she gets killed. And then basically the end starts to happen. Um the female detective, we see, oh, well, we see a flashback to him keeping the red shoes. So those are the same red shoes. Yeah. So that's Yeah, up. the ones that he, he, he took from the girl that he killed. So the female detective who had been talking to the Filipino cleaning lady, maybe? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mentioning something about Jane's place. Uh, female detective goes to check out Jane's place. She gets an axe to the shoulder, mm. which, uh, and that's when Peter is revealed as the killer. So, and that's when the screw is loose. That's when, like, his entire his entire demeanor completely changes too. Exactly, he becomes crazy. He becomes tenebrae. He becomes insane. <laughs> <laughs> He was tenebrae the entire time. The oh my entire goodness. time, man. It's so weird. Uh, the only the detective we haven't mentioned is Detective Germani, which is the main detective on everything. That's his name. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, and that's he, the, they were a pair. Him and the him and the female detective. Yeah. Right, and he shows up with Anne, and or they both show up at the same time. I forget, but um, I kind of knew that when Peter stood up and sli slashed his throat. I kind of figured that it was fake. Did you? Because I yeah. didn't. No, I didn't at all. I was like, he's faking oh, it. Oh, good on you. Oh, I didn't. Because I just didn't think that back in 1980 that that was something that... What, <laughs> I, <laughs> I just didn't think that they were that bright back in the 80s. I didn't well, think Argento that. Well, Argento was, that the movie was, Argento over. was pretty awesome, it turns out. I Well, yes. Yes, you're right. He was. <laughs> but then, I just and thought then that the movie does... was over. He does the shot. Um, what well, Annie goes out to the car, and then for whatever reason, the detective decides to go back in. And then she comes in, and the detective's standing there, and then he moves, and there's Peter standing right behind him. And I think this is one of the first movies to ever do this trick, where Peter's in the shot the entire time, but he's hidden by the detective who's just standing there in front of Peter. Oh, yeah, that, that actually made me jump. Well, like I saw Peter's ear. Do... Oh, if, see, if... I didn't. <laughs> if you watch <laughs> like, that scene again, it looks like the detective has, like, big ears. And I was like, oh, Peter's standing behind him. Yeah, I just think I might have just been really invested. And I was just, like, really. Because <laughs> from that point forward, from when Jane is killed, like, I was just, like, it was just, like, a really hardcore drama at that point. And I was just, yeah. like, like, glued to the TV. Like, just, like, oh, man. Like, yeah, so I, I, I was like, oh, oh, like I yelped. <laughs> I did one of those. 
I did like and, I um, did like I like this final act quite a bit. Um, it was just it it just went off the rails. It kind of and it was bloody. You know, it just it it you know the whole movie is like it it it's it, it it's it's a movie for sure. But this this whole last act was something entirely different than what we had just seen for the last yeah. hour and you know thirty minutes. And then Argento gives really us enjoyed. what we were all hoping for. Um, that big weird sculpture comes into play mm-hmm. and uh, kills Peter, and that was wonderful. Oh yeah, I'm just glad that Anne survived. Yeah, yeah, she was, yeah. She was I lovely. I don't know why I like her so much. I like I just like I like Daria Nicol Nicoldi Nicolodi. What's her name? Is that, I know uh, that it's Azia Azia really Argento's know? mom. No, I just wrote Anne P- Peter's secretary. So. But yeah, I, have, I, have, I know uh, that she is just lovely. I IMDb I just, open. She's also an in inferno. now. Yeah, Daria Nic- Nicolodi. That's her name. She's um, is it Asia or Asia Argento? Because I've been calling her Asia Argento my entire life. I think I've heard Asia, but I'm not sure. Is it Asia? Okay. Um, but that's her. That's her mom. Yeah, yeah. She was. Uh, yeah. She wanted the part of uh of Jane, but. I forget why Dario didn't cast her as Jane, but then oh. uh, he cast her as Anne instead, which is not the type of part that uh, Daria usually played back then. So. Oh, interesting. There's some trivia. I didn't for know you. that. I enjoy that. <laughs> that is good trivia. Have you ever seen? Um, oh, I don't know if you would have. Uh, Mother of Tears. No. Oh, it's terrible. But if you um, <laughs> so you you've seen Suspiria. So watch yeah. Inferno because it's the sequel, like to okay. to Suspiria, and then Mother of Tears is the concluding chapter in yeah, the trilogy like the of trilogy, the Mother of right? Tears. Yeah, okay. and um, Mother of Tears is god awful. Oh man, but there's so much fun if you watch them like as a trilogy. And uh, Daria Nicolodi, Nicol, whatever the last name is that you've already told me twice. Um, she has like a small like CGI part like in in that movie. And it, it's funny to watch her just like appear and reappear and appear and reappear yeah. as like the CGI character <laughs> in that film. And well, uh, I'll have to watch a, that. You, but you have to. That is the end of the movie. Do you have any other notes oh, before we go is, to our? Huh? We have now. I, I'm sure you've heard, but Andrew and I have uh, our three questions that we ask each other. So I are you, uh, do. Are you ready for those questions? I believe so. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to ask you. I'm like, so, I believe so. Okay. Three questions. Here we go. Let's do it. Who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. Question number one, Stanley. Uh, what was your, what did you think was the best kill or death in this movie? I think the best kill kill oh man i'm gonna say the best death would be jane's death i'm gonna agree with you i i yeah. picked the same one um, yeah i'm gonna say j- j- yeah. yeah yeah it was sure. just it was just a gorgeous death and it had mul- multiple layers to it it was a it was a fantastically filmed scene uh number two do you think this movie is scary? Um, no, <laughs> I don't think it was scary. I thought it was entertaining. And I thought that it was, I thought that it was good. And I thought that it had moments that were, that were bloody and, you know, not, not shocking necessarily, but we're bloody. Um, but I don't think it was scary. I don't even necessarily think it was a horror film. I think it was yeah. like, a, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think it was like a, a horror film. I thought it was a, th- I think it was a bloody thriller. Yeah. Like I mean, it had enough, day, it had enough gore that it, it fits within this podcast and everything. And in, within the horror genre in a way, but yeah, I, I I also didn't think it was scary at all. I don't think anybody would be scared by this movie. Um, but, and then finally, that leads us to question number three: Did you have fun with horror? Yes, 
<laughs> and also no, but I'm going to say yes, because I had fun with the whole idea and I had fun like with the, the idea of knowing that we were going to do this. And I had fun with like the concept of uh -huh. that, you know, I got to pick a movie that I had never seen and I love the idea that you had never seen it either. So I had fun with that regard. Um, but also no, because this wasn't a horror movie, you know, like I wish that like I wish that I had picked something that was that was scary. It's okay. So I, I, you know, I want to, I want to come back again one day and I yeah, want to, I want to talk sure. about something that's scary and I want to like know that I picked something scary and I want us to be scared. <laughs> um, so well, yeah, I'm, but no, I, I, I had fun though. Definitely. Good. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, the first time I watched this, I don't think I did have that much fun. Uh, like, like we mentioned earlier, I was a little bit bored. But then my second time, I had a lot more fun. And I will say, once again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, uh, this is on Shudder, and it's on as part of uh, Joe Bob Briggs' uh, Last Drive-In. And I watched yeah. that episode where, you know, so he imparted a lot of knowledge about Jalos and Dario Argento and this movie. And also Darcy the Male Girl. She knows her stuff. I love man. her. Yeah, she's, she's actually wonderful. so much smarter than I ever would have. Like, I'm not, I don't judge anybody, but like, she's so much smarter than I ever would have ever thought anybody could be. Yeah, like she is so well educated. Like, she's like a new age Elvira, man. Like, she really knows her shit. Well, I'll be honest. I saw her in In Search of Darkness one and two, and I didn't oh, yeah. know who she was. I just, you know, I was like, oh, okay, they got this girl who's a really big fan of horror movies and i didn't yeah. dislike her or anything and then all of a sudden i find out that she's the the newest male girl for joe bob and i was like oh wow okay and yeah and then i found out everything she's been doing for the horror community so yeah it's she's she's amazing i love it when like adult film stars really really take a turn and like put their put their um, talent to use in other venues, you know what I mean? Right. So I love that this is like a direction that she's chosen to to really venture off into. So, and I also respect that she has no uh, no embarrassment or anything about her her past or anything, you know? She's, oh, yeah, she's not at all. She's fully accepting of what she, what she did. She doesn't have any, uh, like she doesn't think bad about it and she yeah. fully embraces it and she also fully embraces nudity. She thinks that, you know, nobody should be made to wear shirts ever. <laughs> so no. And I like their chemistry and I like that he doesn't yes. treat her like any less than an equal. And I really think that's so important because he could be kind of a douchebag. Like there are certain, sure. there are certain qualities about him. And I've been watching Joe Bob Briggs since I was a kid. I used to love Monster Vision as a kid. I would stay up late and watch it like as young fat wee standing, you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so, like, I I love that this is now his counterpart. So this is kind of fun to like. I think see she's how this changed is. him for the better, for sure. I think so too. It's like watching like this old this old grumpy grandpa get like a young hot girlfriend, and like oh. how things have like evolved. Yeah, it's kind of neat. And then yeah, uh, she obviously uh, for anybody that doesn't know, the last drive-in would not have come back the way it did without her. She showed up at a signing of his. And she talked to him and said, hey, you should really come back to the last drive-in. And I think it was his idea for her to be the new male girl. And she was so nervous. Like, she does not – she still gets nervous being in front of people and in front of the camera. Um, like, in that Yeah, she capacity. seems really well-reserved. She seems yeah. really, like, kind of, like, quiet. And... Well, she's very self-conscious, you know, when she's in front of the camera. Uh, Which is so funny. Well, it, she's so been funny. bullied a lot, you know? And – yeah, you know, she's a very that's unfortunate. She she'll talk to people all the time about you know, internet bullies and all that, and w we hate those people, obviously. Sure, but uh, yeah, she's just she's just amazing, and I love I love 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 what she constantly does for the horror community. I like that too. I, it's important. It's important. Yeah. The horror community is, you know, it's like a it, it's changed so much over the last. I mean, five years, let alone the last two, you yeah. know, like it's, it, it's really weird to see where we are now and where we used to be. And, you know, just like the movies that are coming out and it's, it's just so fascinating. And I, I'm really curious to see where we're going to be 
in the next two years, in the next five years, in the next 10 years. And it's, it's a really cool, it's a really mm-hmm. cool community to be a part of. And I'm Absolutely. really, I'm really happy. I'm well, really happy to be a part of it. I met you through it. So this is, yeah, this has man, been wonderful. I'm really happy to have met you. I'm really so, happy to have met you. I hope you bring me to, back to this. Yeah, no, we would love to. And the next time you, you come back, it'll be with uh, both of us, Andrew and I. So, Oh, good. That'll be yeah. fun too. Oh, I'm so happy. So, uh, so yeah, let's uh let's wrap this up. Thank you so much, Stanley, for being on the on the podcast. This was this oh, was so much fun. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm really happy that I got to be your first guest, and I'm really and I can't wait to, I can't wait to hear this back. I can't wait to hear how um how this sounds. And, I'm happy uh, you were my first too, think. Stanley. Oh, good. <laughs> that sounds dirty and fun. <laughs> All well, right. Um, hey man, On that thank note, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. <laughs> hey, take care. <laughs> the rest, Mr. Germani, was like writing a book. A book. Perfect revenge. The razor killer was dead, but you wanted him to live on long enough to be blamed for the murder of your fiance and her lover. The two people you hated most. Come on, get up. (laughs) No. Okay, so uh, that was our discussion of Tenebrae. And next week we are going to continue to allow Andrew to enjoy his new baby, Enzo. So I'm going to have another special guest. And she's actually here right now with me. My special guest for next week is my very own lady love, my girlfriend, Mary. Say hello, Mary. Hello, Mary. How exciting, Scotty. I am here with you right now. Yes, this is the first time I've recorded. Well, no, you've been on the show before. And when you were on before, you were sitting next to me then. So it's not the first time. But this is exciting. I mean, it's kind of kinky that we're kind of just sharing and breathing on the same mic (sighs) yeah so anyway so uh you have chosen our movie for next week and as as stanley did too uh you followed the rules it has to be a movie you've never seen and then we're both gonna watch it hopefully together mary what movie did you choose i unfortunately chose a movie that i know will definitely scare me and i chose lights out why because it was probably the most scariest trailer that i picked out of three trailers i watched and when i saw the preview i was like yeah that's definitely going to be really scary for me so you know keeping the theme of your podcast that you and andrew have curated for all your lovely listeners i decided to just continue to keep on the scare and the horror and the oh my god am i going to be able to sleep after i'm done watching this with you well uh we have planned to watch this uh in the morning yes on saturday when it's bright light outside and gives us plenty of time to put on (laughs) dumbo or uh moana afterwards so that you'll be fine of course i will be leaving the apartment after we watching it after we watch it i'll be leaving you here by yourself but you'll be okay um i'm actually excited that you chose this because i know that i watched i watched you go back and forth trying to decide what movie to pick and we almost went to the theater to see a movie, um, probably something that Andrew and I will do later. But when you finally settled on Lights Out, this is a movie that I've had in my iTunes wish list for a long time. So I'm pretty excited to watch this. I don't know what it's about. I've never seen the trailer. You have. So this will be fun. Yeah, fun for you. And I... I don't really know what to expect or how I'm how this is going to affect me later, but I definitely know it's going to scare the living bejeebus out of me. Okay, well, I hope I hope it scares me. I mean, we're kind of sometimes scared by the same kind of things, so Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see everybody. 
All right. Well, everybody, join us next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Join Mary and I for uh, episode 64 of Fun with Horror. Lights out. <laughs> and we'll, we'll turn the lights out while we record and have a great time. Bye, everyone. By the way, I finished your book. You know what? I guessed who the killer was on page 30. Page 30, never happened before. I'll take you home.